everyone, it's Pam from Glam Junk Journals and today we are continuing on in my series, What Can I Create With That? Inspiration from this garment. So this is going to be video number three and we're going to be focusing on making the cover for my next journal, all inspired by this gorgeous trim. So let's just get right into it. As you guys remember from my last video, I did cut off a whole bunch of the trim that went around that garment. And so this is still our inspiration. Like I said, what I wanna do today is work on the cover. And since this journal is going to be slightly grungy, shabby chic, vintagey with the creams and the light pinks and these gorgeous colors, um, I wanted to use some wallpaper. So I gathered a piece of wallpaper and let me show you that here. And what I did is I just tore around the edges uh, to give it that distressed look and went around all of the exterior with a combination of Distress Ink in my Walnut Stain and Distress Oxide in Victorian Velvet because that's just a gorgeous pink that goes so well with the whole theme that I got going on here. So let's get into it. I love this wallpaper, it's so pretty. So we're going to start on the interior. And what I want it to do on the interior is line it with some magazine images. So I gathered two pages from a catalog that I got at the last postcard and ephemera show. Let me show it to you. It is absolutely beautiful. Obone Marsh in Paris, and the images are fabulous. I'm so excited. It's dated 1923. So like I said is I pulled two images out of the catalog and we're going to use that on the interior of the wallpaper. Is line my wallpaper with this. And to do that, I am going to use some Mod Podge. So I'm gonna get out my little trusty, uh, um, what do you wanna call this? Crafting mat so that I don't get everything really messy even though I'm a very messy crafter. So I do have my apron on, huh? So I am going to use Mod Podge mat. Now granted, you can use whatever Mod Podge you want. Really, um, I have not found that much of a difference between the different varieties of Mod Podge. This is just a mat that has kind of a tint to it. So you could probably make your own uh, with adding just a little bit of probably a watercolor or acrylic paint to the your mat. I haven't tried that, but that's always something you can check out. So what I'm going to do is we are going to just... Mod Podge these gorgeous images to the back of my wallpaper. So we're gonna get a generous amount here going. Thus the reason for my uh, crafting mat here. And I just, I'm so excited about this. When I found those images in that magazine, I'm like, oh, this is gonna go so well with my journal. Oh man, so there's the one side, and look at this. Is this the prettiest thing ever? Oh my gosh, I just love it, absolutely love it. And a bonus is it's about the size of my journal cover. So I'm just gonna lay that down, and try to get it to go over the whole thing and I'm going to use my wallpaper spreader use a bone folder a ruler whatever you want around the edge there and I don't mind this up at the top I'm going to distress that and we'll just make that look fabulous also so there's one side easy enough right and then 
Let's see where my fold is. I did fold it in half so that I can get kind of an idea as to where the center is. And I'm just gonna tear that off. And it's okay that it's not, you know, even or anything like that. I'm gonna do the other side, same deal here. Go to town. So today, you guys, is absolutely freezing. It's like 10 degrees outside. And what was I saying the other day that I was outside in shorts? Ha! Yeah, well, that's Colorado weather for you here, right? Okay, so there's that. Now, I think what I'll do is I will tear this down to make it almost the same size as the other page because this is a little bit larger. And I will distress that just so that you don't see the white. Get along that line there. Although it probably really doesn't matter because it, this is going to be right on the center of the spine of my <clears throat> signature, so you probably won't see it. But I don't want it to show, so we'll do that as a safety precaution. <laughs> and line this side up here. And that looks really good. And press that down. I love the images of these hats. And oh, it's just so, they're so gorgeous. I just absolutely love this. And that's, I'm sure, why my favorite series of all, all time, Downton Abbey, I absolutely love that too. All right, now I am going to also paint over the whole thing because the reason for me doing that is I want Mod Podge to be kind of a seal, a sealer for this. And I just feel that it'll adhere better, it'll last longer, but that's definitely another personal preference thing. You don't have to do that, you know. It's entirely up to you. I think what I will do is go ahead and distress just the top of that wallpaper and then down here where it's showing through a little bit. And we're still going to um, do a little bit more on the interior of this. So I am gonna just get out some more of this Antique Matte Mod Podge. And I didn't want um, a gloss on this because I am going with the um, uh, the more vintage look. And granted, gloss would be pretty too, but I wanted more of a an aged look. And to me, gloss is not as aged as maybe a matte. And that's just my thoughts on that. So there's one side. I'm going to do the other side. And this dries really well. It, um, you don't see any of the lines, you don't have any uh, bubbles. And I just think it works really well. All right, so there that is. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to let this dry and I'll probably use my blow dryer on this. I don't have a heat tool. My heat tool broke a long time ago and I haven't replaced it, but I am going to dry this. And then when it's almost dry, what I do is I take a piece of wax paper and go over the top and just press any bubbles out with this. So I'll come back in just a moment and I'll show you what I'm talking about and we'll continue on with this. So hold on. All right, this is dry. And like I said, what I did is when it was like 90% dry, I went across with this piece of wax paper and really 
pushed out any of the creases or bubbles or anything like that. And it just really makes the whole thing look so, so good. Okay, so that is complete. And look at that. Is that cool? Or is that beautiful? <laughs> Interior. So we're going to go to the exterior. Yay. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tear along the edges of the, the um, tears that I already created and, you know, go along with that same raggedy, jaggedy edge, which I think lends to the whole grunge effect. And it looks really good. And I don't really care if I get you know, some tears on the back side, meaning if I tear into some of the um, uh, image on the back, because you can always distress that up, and I think it just adds to the whole effect. Now, I cannot tear this because it's too close to the border, so I'm going to get out my little fancy-dancy scissors here and just go along that. These have a slight um, jaggedy edge, and that adds to the, you know, the whole look. So I'm just going to go along the sides there. All right, so there, there you have it. All right, let me move these scraps out of the way. Okay, I'm going to fold this again and figure out where my center is. Okay, so this is going to be my front, and of course I always have to figure out, okay, now wait, is this right side up? Because I have made journals where I put something in and it's upside down. Have you guys done that? <laughs> but, so we're gonna have to pay attention here. All right, so this is the front. And I've gathered some additional pieces of paper which I think will go just fabulously, is that a word? Fabulously with this. Oh, I can't get over this. That was the find of the year. <laughs> okay, so I have an image from the graphics fairy. And what I did do is I tore around the edge and did create the distress look again. And um, also the uh, distress ink and my gold wax. Where is my gold wax? Here it is. The rub and buff wax. I went around the edge there. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use this on the cover and some of my off cuts. This is just a piece of lined paper that I was experimenting with, just doing some stenciling on. And this has been sprayed with that Lindy's uh, Starburst spray, that gold spritz. So I'm going to, I'm going to use that. This is going to be for the interior again. And this is another wallpaper image from the graphics fairy. And look at how those colors go. Oh. And then the focal point is this gorgeous image I printed off of Pickerel. That's P-I-C-Y-R-L. It's a public domain free domain images of probably just about everything you could think of. And the coloring just went so well. I was just scrolling through and happened to find this. And I'm like, oh, I've got to use that. And as a bonus, check this out. It's the same kind of hats. Ah, is that cool? Oh, I know. Sheesh. Sometimes I'm impressed with my own self. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. We are going to add this to the cover. So Mod Podge away, baby. Let's just do it. And what I've found, and this is just um, from experience, is sometimes if you glue things down, like if I just glued this with my... Uh, 
you know, my Scotch Create. Sometimes if you're going to put a Mod Podge coating over that, meaning if I glued this down with my glue stick and then put this on there and then put a layer of Mod Podge, sometimes it doesn't adhere as well and it gets all sorts of weird little bubbles on it and I don't like that. So we're going to layer with Mod Podge. But, you know, there again, that's a personal preference thing. That's just what I found from experience. If you guys think that, uh, you know, if you found that gluing works, then by all means, go for it. And so let's see, we're going to do some layering. Get that fuzz out of there, I don't wanna fuzz. This was my plan, is to kind of, I don't know. I don't want, I want a little bit of that to show this writing and then that little piece right there. So we're gonna Mod Podge that so that it sticks down over this. And then we're gonna, we're going to go with a coat of Mod Podge over the whole thing. Get that down there. Make sure the ends are down. It's getting closer and closer to Christmas. Oh man, I know, it's wild, isn't it? Isn't it crazy how fast the holidays sneak up on you? I think so, yeesh. Okay, so there's that. And then we're gonna put this over the top. And then our gorgeous lady. I do want to fold this again so that I can see how the finished, you know, the finished cover is going to look. And I just think that that is the bomb. All right, so we're going to go with that right there. And I've also found that the longer you let Mod Podge sit, the flatter it gets, meaning if there are any sort of little bubbles or anything like that, they seem to flatten out. And another, you know, good rule of thumb would be if you wanted to, you could put this whole thing or whatever you're Mod Podging, put a heavy book over it, put a, you know, start with a layer of wax paper and then put, um, the books over the top. I think that works really well. Now what I'm doing right here is just making sure my edges are stuck down. And this one isn't right here on the side. I'm gonna go along and do that. And I have made, to be honest with you guys, I have made journal covers where I don't Mod Podge over it. I don't know why, but for this particular project, and maybe it's because I started with a piece of wallpaper that I feel that Mod Podge was a better way to adhere everything. All right, so then we're gonna put this gorgeous lady. I don't know if I want her right in the center. I kind of like her offset meaning, you know, a little bit uh, towards the bottom or over there. I don't know. I still like this little piece of uh, script that you can see through, so we're going to go with that right there. Man, this is going to be cool. This is, oh man, looking fabulous. Okay, stick her down there. Now, how did I have it? <laughs> you know, you get it just the way you want it. And then you have to remove it because of your glue. And then you don't know which way it was. Oh, that happens to me all the time. Now, this is one thing where I do want to hold it up to make sure she's straight across. Because even though this is the grungy, shabby, chic look, I don't want her to be sideways. 
All right, and now finishing touch. Well, not finishing touch, finishing portion is I am going to Mod Podge over the whole thing. I'm going to dry it and then we'll come back and we'll add the finishing touches to this cover. So stay with me. I'll be right back after I dry this. All right, check it out. Oh, and I was thinking as I was drying this, another reason why I like to Mod Podge over these things is it just feels, it feels like a book cover. It really does. Not quite a hardback, but not quite a paperback either. It's kind of in between. It's, it's flexible, but it's still really, really sturdy. Does that look good? Yes. Now, you may be asking, well, Pam, hmm, how are you going to incorporate this? Because that was the whole premise for this video series, right? Well, I will show you. What I am going to do on the interior is I am going to add two side tucks. Now, this is just uh, some double-sided cardstock that I had and the coloring just went fabulous. So what I'm going to do is just tack those down along the top and the bottom with my glue stick here. And I do, don't you guys like the way that that edge looks? And even this at the bottom, that's the wallpaper pattern. You know how they have that on the interior of the, or the back of the page. I think that goes so well. So added bonus right there, right? Oh, all right. So these are going to go right along the side there. And let's see, I did cut a piece of this trim again, and I am going to, um, what's the word? Scrunch up this um, trim and sew all the way around the edge of the whole thing. And that's going to be where I incorporate this trim. So I apologize ahead of time for all of the stoppages here. I just didn't want you guys hanging out while I dried with the blow dryer or as I'm sewing around the edges. But stay with me and you'll see the finished product in just a minute. So hold on. All right. Yay. I just got to say, yay. Look at this. Is that like fabulous? All inspired by this gorgeous trim. So what I did is I did do a decorative stitch around the edge. That's totally optional if you don't have a sewing machine. And on the inside, there is two side tucks. And what's cool is the back side of this trim is also very pretty, which I think is definitely a bonus. And so there she is, the cover for my next journal. And my idea is for, you know me, additional embellishments on the front is, you remember this gown here? Let me show you, or not gown, dress that I got at ARC. I've cut off some of the lace and I'm going to use this somewhere up here, maybe as a uh, corner bow or some type of embellishment along the side there. I'm going to add maybe a little bit more of that gorgeous fabric and some um, sorry silk maybe. I am not sure what the whole finished uh, cover is going to look like, but it'll look something similar, you know, to this and maybe a vintage earring or some sort of brooch or button or something along the sides. And I'm not sure whether I'm going to tie uh, a ribbon around for the closure or, you know, put a... Uh, an eyelet on the side and have it tie that way. I'm not sure about that. But for the most part, 
here it is and it looks absolutely fabulous so thank you for watching today and my next video will be the flip through of my completed journal everything that we've made together with this inspirational piece and the final surprise that I have coming up which I am so excited to share with you it's it's just it's gonna make my going to make my day and hopefully make your day too so thank you for watching please like and subscribe and enjoy your holidays everyone I'll talk to you soon bye